Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto, and I'm coming back just as I promised with uh, my review, or I guess it's more of initial thoughts slash review because I, I've had the 28 to 70 RF lens from Canon. This is the F2. It's a very large, very fast lens. Um, really kind of caught everybody by surprise because Canon, before they even really had like the uh, the trinity of lenses, the typical lenses that you would expect um, on a new a new lens platform. Uh, they came out with this really fast 28 to 70, and it caught my attention, as I mentioned in my uh, initial thoughts on the EOS R, that uh, it caught my attention because of its size and because it's an F2 lens. And so they're, the size is one thing because with mirrorless camera systems, we're used to smaller, uh, lightweight stuff, um, and this is definitely not a lightweight lens. But the F2 on a zoom like that really uh, kind of caught me by surprise when I was at NAB earlier this year in 2019. Had a chance to get my hands on it. Uh, I mentioned this and talked about it a little bit more in, uh, in my first shots with the EOS R. But nonetheless, um, I got to get my hands on one uh, thanks to Lens Pro to Go for sending me out uh, this camera and this lens so that I'd have some time to spin with it. And I just can't put this down. Now, the EOS R itself, I talked about in my kind of initial thoughts video, is, is a great camera. I mean, really good. Canon did a good job with this camera. But really, I think it is the glass. Of course, I've mentioned this in many videos before. The quality of the glass that you put on your camera is going to make a huge difference. And this lens is just a beast. Now, there aren't any profiles or anything out for it on Lightroom yet, uh, but I have done some tweaking around, just kind of looking and, and trying to find flaws with this lens. Because with a new platform like this, uh, a new lens, you know, Canon is kind of stuck to their guns for a long time. And with their EF uh, platform, has really just made revisions to their lenses for a while. Um, yeah, there's been some new lenses that have came out, but nothing really like groundbreaking or outside of the norm until this lens. And so the, what I like about this lens, I'm gonna talk about kind of the things that I like about it before I start getting into its actual performance. Um, what I like about it is just the fact that it's fast, F2, really great being able to have some zoom and have a faster lens like that. I know that's something that everybody's gonna talk about when it comes to this lens. Um, it also has this adjustable ring here. Uh, so you have your zoom and your focus, and then you have a third ring, which you can then map to different things, which I mapped to ISO so that I can adjust the ISO. Makes it really nice. It does have kind of a little clicky feel to it, which is okay. It's not a heavy click like uh, an aperture ring on some other lenses. Um, so what I can do when I'm shooting video is actually use this to kind of feather my exposure. Typically, if you're shooting manual on a camera and you're trying to feather your exposure smoothly, you would do that maybe with the aperture ring, and that's going to change your depth of field as you're shooting. And you know, depending on what you're doing, it might be noticeable or not. But actually, just being able to like slowly ramp up the ISO seems to make it pretty smooth, and I've enjoyed using that, especially considering there's no real easy way to adjust your ISO without clicking a couple of things, mapping it to this ring and just kind of being able to adjust it even when I'm shooting photos is just a huge benefit for me. So uh, those were things that I like about the lens. Aside from that, the lens doesn't have hardly anything else going on on the outside. It has your autofocus, manual focus switch, and then it has a lock on it and that's it. Um, there's no internal stabilization or anything in this lens. It's just a big beast that swallows up the light and gives you beautiful photos. So let's talk a little bit about performance. And of course, as I'm talking about this lens, I'm kind of showing you some photos, showing you a little bit of video clips that I've shot with it. But uh, one of the things that I definitely noticed when I imported my first photos into Lightroom and started messing with them is just how sharp and how great these photos are from edge to edge. Um, like I said, there's no profiles in Lightroom yet. So I typically, if there is a profile, you know, there's a decent adjustment for some lenses that has to be done. Uh, just to kind of correct for those abnormalities that typically uh, a lens brings into your photo. Um, but I started kind of messing around, you know, trying to see if there was any vignetting or anything going on that's weird in the edges. And it is a very, very sharp lens, uh, especially if you get it to, and I don't know necessarily it's sweet spot. I didn't spend a ton of time testing it, 
but any time that I was around like the f5.6 range, the lens was just beautifully sharp all the way across the edge, and there was still actually a, a good shallow depth of field to the image that I was shooting. Of course, if you go all the way down to f2, it's still a pretty sharp image all the way across. You do start to see a little bit in the edges, a little bit of softness, but that's gonna be typical of any lens at its widest aperture. This is a 95 millimeter uh, face on this lens, so um, that's large. Most of us don't have lenses that have that large of a filter thread, so when it comes to putting something on this lens to protect it, of course, Lens Pro to Go sent a uh, lens protector on it, um, a B&W 95 millimeter clear. Uh, so that's on there just to protect it. But the face of this lens is huge, and so you definitely want to protect it. Um, I'm going to make sure to link in the description below to this lens, also to a lens protector, um, and I'll just link to a couple of other things that I've used when shooting with this package that uh, I've just found useful, like the SD card and stuff that I use. Um, I like people are always asking me about that stuff. Um, so uh, this isn't going to be much talking about the EOS R, but this is the only camera really that this lens is going to work on. It works with the EOS R, and uh, then there's the other one, the RP, that they have, and this lens will work on that. But those are the only two cameras that this lens will actually work on. So there isn't a whole lot that you can do with this lens unless you have this platform, the new uh, Canon mirrorless platform, which so far I've been pretty impressed with. Of course, people have uh, their things that they've had to say, especially in my last video where I talk about this camera body itself, um, but I think that Canon is really on to something. This is kind of like their a7 III or their Nikon Z6. It's a uh, relatively affordable prosumer level camera, but then you put this $3,000 lens on here, which is a, an expensive lens, and you have to ask yourself, is there something that's going to come next from Canon? There's the EOS R, but is there going to be something that's a little bit more pro level because this is very much a pro level lens and most people I don't think are really going to invest $3,000 in a lens to put on a $2,000 camera body. It's just uh, an expensive purchase. It's expensive thing to swallow, especially when most people are, are mainly thinking about uh, a 24 to 70, the, just the more typical f2.8 type of lens, which I know that Canon is working on. So who is this lens for? Well, I think that this lens is for somebody who's trying to have a little bit of something different. Everybody goes and gets the 24 to 70, the 70 to 200, maybe even the 16 to 35 or something like that. Those are the same lenses that everybody gets. How are you going to differentiate your look a little bit and just have something that's a little bit different than everybody else? That's where this lens comes into play. I have a 2470 on every other camera that I've ever owned. I have a 2470 on the Nikon. Z6 that I've been playing with and just having something a little bit different even though this is just 28 to 70 but being able to go down to f2 really you know you can't look at the image and know what lens it was shot with and that's kind of exciting to me I kind of like that I like having a little bit of mystery in what it is that I have shot people can't look at it and say like oh that was shot with this lens or whatnot so I liken this lens to something that's just a little bit new that not everybody has, and it's just something different. Of course, $3,000 is a lot of money to spend on something just because somebody else doesn't have it, but with that said, I, I just really, really enjoy this lens. Um, I've been in Montana for the last, uh, well, pretty much all of this month, and I've been shooting with it a lot. And even though this is a tank of a camera setup, I just absolutely love shooting with it because it's very versatile. It gives me almost that full 24 to 70 that I'm used to, but then I can go down to that F2 and get really nice shots, but I, I'm gonna have to send it back to Lens Pro to go. They let me borrow it for a full month, and unfortunately, that just hasn't been enough time for me to get to do everything that I want to do with the lens. But nonetheless, I wanted to share some of my shots with you, share my thoughts on it so far. I'm not a very scientific talker when it comes to camera equipment. I just like to share my opinion and my thoughts on what I'm using and show you some of the photos that I've captured along the way. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, just my opinion on the lens so far. I hope to be able to get my hands on one again later on. Maybe um, uh, Canon will reach out or something and I'll be able to 
spend some more time with one, do a little bit more adventuring with it. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm just glad that I got to spend some time with it. So thank you to Lens Pro to Go. I always recommend renting before you buy a lens anyways. A lens this expensive, don't just go out and buy it, rent it. You can use the coupon code that Lens Pro to Go gave me. It's just my first name, Jared. And at checkout, you'll save a bunch and you can rent this lens. Maybe you're even considering switching platforms over to uh, the Canon EOS R. Rent this setup. I'll put a link to it down below so that you could check it out, rent it, give it a go for yourself, and share your opinion. Uh, just actually, if you do that, let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear it because everybody's opinion uh, brings something different, and that's what one of the great things about the internet. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff by me here on YouTube, and I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.